So let's look at an example. We've got some, some different quadric surfaces here, and um, we want to know, well, what is the shape? What's the shape of these surfaces? So oh, for each one, I want to I classify it. Now, I can come up with the name pretty quickly just by thinking about freezing each variable as a constant. If I freeze z, so that's just some constant, I've got a y squared and an x, so that's a parabola, right? If I freeze y, I've got a z squared and an x, so another parabola. And if I freeze x, I've got an ellipse, so it's mostly parabolas. So I know that the name of this guy is a paraboloid. Yeah, so it also, it, one direction it's ellipses, right? So it's an elliptic paraboloid. If, um, if I had um, hyperbolas at some point, so then it would be a hyperbolic paraboloid. But in this case, if you, uh, if you freeze x at like say zero, you're seeing ellipses. So that makes, that makes, that means freezing, uh, that means you see elliptic cross sections, therefore an elliptic paraboloid. The oid part always comes from what does it have most of? Uh, let's look at this example. Uh, 2x squared plus y squared minus z squared. So I can see that um, if I freeze x at some constant, I've got y squared minus z squared, so that's going to be a hyperbola. If I freeze y at some constant, then um, I know that I, then I've got x squared minus z squared, so I've got hyperbolas again. Therefore, I know that this thing is a hyperboloid, because in most directions I see hyperbolas, a hyperboloid. The question is, is it one sheet or two sheets? And the way to answer that is to get the, the variable that has the, the sign that's different from the others, get the different one so that it's positive on the other side. Okay, now when I look at this hyperboloid, I can see that no matter what choice of z, I could have any choice of z, I'm going to see an, an ellipse of some sort. Even if I set z to be 0, I still have a positive number over here, so I'm still going to be able to see an ellipse. That's how I know that it's a hyperboloid of one sheet. Let me look at that. Okay, so that's going to be a hyperboloid of one sheet. Let's look at this case. Mm, again, if I freeze x, I have parabolas. It, I have a parabola because I have z and y squared. If I freeze y, I have z and x squared, so I have a parabola. So I know that this guy has to be a paraboloid because it's mostly parabolas. If I freeze z, so make z a constant, like maybe say 1, then you're going to have a, a negative x squared and a positive y squared. That makes a hyperbola. So I know that in two directions it's parabolas, in one direction it's hyperbolas, therefore it's a hyperbolic paraboloid. Mm, in this case, uh, we've got one variable that's different from the others, right? We've got z squared and x squared. They're both negative, but then the y squared is positive. Let's move it over a little bit so we have the positive ones over on one side. So I'm going to add 3x squared to both sides and add z squared to both sides. That's all going to be on the side where the 1 is. On the other side we have the 2y squared. Um, maybe I should go one step more and move that over. So we have 3x squared plus z squared equals 2y squared minus 1. Now I know this guy is a hyperboloid. And the way I know it is because if I freeze x at some constant, we've got y squared minus z squared, that's hyperbola. Freeze y at some, at, freeze z at some constant, and we're going to have uh, y squared minus x squared, that's a hyperbola. So I, I know that it's in two directions, hyperbolas, so it's a hyperboloid. Remember the question on hyperboloids, is it one sheet or two sheets? Looking at this equation right here, I can see that if I freeze y, if y is a big enough value, I'm going to see ellipses. But if y is near 0, then this negative 1 is going to overwhelm the 2y squared. So I'll have a negative number on this side, but a positive number on the left-hand side. So I know that in, in one direction when I slice it, I see ellipses. That's true for every kind of hyperboloid. Um, but for certain values of y, I don't see any ellipses at all. That means this is going to be a hyperboloid of two sheets. What about this one? Uh, this is the case where there's only one squared variable. You could think that you could just make a transformation or a substitution and let u be 3y minus z. This is just um, a particular line um, out in the yz plane. And so you end up with this equation, 2x squared plus u equals 0. So basically we have a parabola in, in, in a, in a 
in in one direction and then that parabola just gets moved about so we have here then a parabolic cylinder so I always recognize that by there's only one squared term and the rest are linear <coughs> okay let's see on oh, this last case you can see no matter which variable I freeze, I get ellipses. If x is 0, you get ellipses. If y is, say, frozen at 0, you get ellipses because you have x squared plus z squared positive on the same side. Um, if you freeze z equals 0, you get ellipses. So no matter how you slice this thing, it's elliptical, so it must be an, an ellipsoid. So we're able to identify those. So with a little bit of practice, you can identify these. You could also go back and actually sketch the graphs here. Um, this elliptic paraboloid, if you look at it, if you move x over so it's by itself, you'd have 2z squared plus 3y squared uh, minus 1. So if you freeze y at 0, then you're going to see an ellipse in, or a parabola in the xz plane. And if you freeze uh, z at 0, you're going to see a parabola in the xy plane. So you see a parabola that way. And if you freeze x, then you see ellipses. So you're going to see an elliptic paraboloid opening out, centered on the x-axis in this case. Um, visualizing that one, a hyperboloid of one sheet. If we look at this equation, we know for every value of z, we see ellipses. Right? When z equals 0, we see this the smallest ellipse. And then the bigger z gets, the bigger the ellipses get. So we know we're in the hyperboloid of one sheet case, the nuclear cooling tower kind of picture. This one is a, parab is a paraboloid. Remember the parabolas are here. If I get z alone, we have 2y squared minus 3x squared. But if we look, if we freeze y, then in the xz plane we see a parabola opening down. Uh, but if we freeze x at 0, then in the yz, yz plane we see a parabola opening up. So this is what leads to sort of a parabola of parabolas, or an upside down parabola of, of right side of parabolas, this leads to the saddle. So we have that, um, that saddle shape in the hyperbolic parabola. So. Okay, let's see. Over here, this was a hyperboloid of, of two sheets. You can see that for different values of y, as long as y is big enough, you see ellipses. So if we draw our axes here, oh, that's a bad. Let's go over here. If we draw our axes, x, y, and z, then if y equals 0, we don't see anything. But if y gets big enough, we'll start to first see a point, and then we'll see ellipses that get larger and larger as we move out. And so, and then if it doesn't matter if y is positive or negative, because y squared is still the same. So we still see the point, and then the ellipse is getting bigger as we move back in the negative y direction. So there's, there's our two sheets in our hyperboloid of two sheets. Let's see, the parabolic cylinder. We just know that um, in one direction, we see, um, we see these hyperbolas in that direction. So we see hyperbolas in this direction, and it doesn't matter what the other variable is. So moving out kind of in a line, we see kind of like a half pipe, right? a parabolic half pipe in that case. And then the ellipsoid, no matter how you slice it, it's it's ellipses. If I divide it by 24, I'd have x squared over t2 into 24, 12, um, y squared over 8, and z squared over 6 equals 1. So we have, depending on which variable we set to 0, then we see ellipses of different size. So it looks like it's longest in the x direction, and a little shorter in the y direction, and even shorter in the z direction. So, so we have our three ellipses, we have kind of our football shape longest along the x-axis.